everyone and welcome to Red United TV. It's your boy, Ivorian Spice, and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 25. Yes, another week, guys. A brilliant week so far for us Manchester United fans. You know, those Liverpool scums, those scousers. Trust me, they definitely, they lost yesterday, guys. They lost, and boy, we are excited as Manchester United fans. Level on points with Liverpool. One game in hand against Liverpool. It's looking rosy for Manchester United for those who believe that we're in a title race. But as my boy Jake says, you know, we're going to wait until the end of the season. Definitely. Definitely I would. Because you never know whether we have the strength, the tactical announce, the right people in charge to lead, you know, this team into a title. We'll never know. But we will definitely find out if, if we have the cojones this season. And guys, remember, if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and remember to share, guys. And this week, guys, we'll be talking about the match against Aston Villa. Um, also, do you think that Manchester United, of course, needs to sign a centre-back? Or what we have is enough? Uh, your player of the year so far this season, meaning the most impressive Man United player has, for you. Um, of course, we'll be driving on the weekend Premier League match, of course, last week. Of course, a couple of teams lost, you know, a couple of teams lost, a couple of ups lost, you know, i.e. Chelsea as well. Throw Lampard back again with his, you know, doing what he's doing, losing and complaining, you know. Liverpool lost, of course. You all know that. We're happy for us. We're all happy right now. Arsenal won, my team as well. They won, they've done the thing, you know. Of Three course, time in a row. Lee's got spanked, Tottenham won. But yeah, we're definitely going to be talking about the match against Man City. Manchester Derby happening tomorrow. You don't know, of course, those ups, noisy neighbours, you know. They might have to get it tomorrow, you know. They might have to get it. But then again, let's not talk about it. Talk about it later. Of course, you know our team, Manchester United. We have our days against City, so you never know. Let's go straight into that match against Aston Villa. Ha. First of all, let's pay homage to a couple of players right now. Eric Bailly, thank you. David De Gea, thank you. Paul Abile Pogba, thank you. Bruno Fernandes, thank you. Anthony Martial, thank you very much. Oli, th thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, guys, let's put, play some homage. I'm done with my homage now. Uh, that match against Aston Villa, a good win for us. A very good match for the neutrals, you know. You know, if you was a neutral, you would have loved that match. You know, Jack Grealish done a thing against us, but still, he failed. You know, he never succeeded at whatever he was trying to do against Manchester United. We won and prevailed, you know. So... I'm pretty much pleased we are level on points with Liverpool after winning that match. And with our game in hand, it's looking good for us. It is really looking good for us. Of course, I don't want to be a bit bitter and say that, oh, wait until... At the end of the day, we are in a title race, whether we like it or not, whether I like it or not. We are in a title race. We're, we're in talks now, you know. We are talk to talk with Liverpool right now. We're all up in their face before we were breathing on their necks. But now we're all up in their face. It's a COVID-19 situation that between us and Liverpool. You get me? You get me? That situation's there, Liverpool fans. We're all up in your face, man. You get me? You get me? But yeah, man, please. I'm just pleased to see Manchester United because who would have thought? All of us about six weeks ago, you know, where we was, how we our feelings were, you know, and to see us with up at the table, level on points with those scousers to end the year and start the year like that. I'm happy. Jax, bro, what are you saying, fam? How you been? I've been well, bro. Um, plenty of football to watch in the last week or two, so that's been keeping me entertained. Uh, United, of course, we've been doing well. We've been winning. We drew one game, I think, in the last three weeks. It's looking like a title race, as you say, bro, but I don't want to get too gassed, like I keep saying. I want to keep a level head, you know, and take it game by game. But so far, so good. I'm well, bro. Hope you guys are well, too. 
What are you saying, Amok? What are you saying, bro? How yeah, you feeling, Jags, bro? I'm good, man. I'm feeling good, man. Like, of course, after the results this past weekend and that, come on, man. Like, you just said it yourself. The offs, them not losing and we elevating. It's still, um, I still can't believe what we're going through. Like, it's all mystery, but I just got to accept it. And like you said, big up to all the names that you called. I am just going to say the name. Like, big up mm-hmm. to the team. Like, yeah. everyone in the team. Even the behind back, the, the, the back door stops. The back all of them. stops. Like the back, yeah, all of them. Uh, big up to you, man. Like, we never thought we'd find ourselves in this situation. Like, I've never seen United sitting, baby sitting after Christmas for a very long time. So I'm impressed. Very impressed. All right, man. Let's just look into that match, man. Of course, there's a couple of good performances. Uh, Let's just talk about Eric Bailly's defensive output in that game. Well, Jax, what did you think of Eric Bailly's performance? His performance didn't surprise me, you know. I expected that from him because to see him play now his fourth game in a row, I expected it from him. Everyone knows that the only issue with Bailly is his fitness. So once he can remain fit, we will see many, many more performances like that. Like I said, he's our best defender. He's tenacious. He's aggressive. He does stupid things sometimes, but if he can concentrate for 90 minutes, for me, he's he's a very, very good centre-back. I'm very happy with his performance. Yeah, I'm truly happy for him because, of course, I've always said this before, I believe he's our best centre-back that we have at Manchester United. Whether or not he can solve our, um, our problems right now, what we need, of course, someone to be staying fit, we're, we're there yet, we're yet to find out. So, everybody, I'm, I'm pleased for him. I'm pleased for my brother, you know. That's my guy, though, you know. On the line, my friend, man. On the line, on our son. I've, I've worried him, brother. I want him to do well. He's been injured for so long, for the longest, and, and just injuries after injuries after injuries again. And I've always... For some reason I backed him because I, I remember when I first saw Eric Bay, you know, he played for Ivory Coast. He didn't play for Manchester United back in those days. Back in those days, he was probably selling cigarettes when he was playing for Ivory Coast now in, in the African Cup nation. I don't know where he was. So 10 years ago, 15 years ago, he was playing cigarettes. So we got exactly when he played for Ivory Coast, I, I cost the hell out of him because I thought he was shit. And what I saw there to what I see now, when he even joined Manchester United, I'm like, well done, bro. You stepped up. You worked hard to get to where you need to get right now, from where you've come from. You know, it's not easy coming from Ivory Coast as well, especially for how he lived and how he grew up. You know, he even had to sell whatever he had to sell to just to make it, you know, to get by in life. So it's not easy. But big ups to um, everybody, man. I just hope he can stay fit. Like, I really want him to stay fit this season, man, and just be there because with him, Look at that. Maguire is looking normal. He's looking like a decent centre back now. Maguire, because Maguire can do all these nonsense now. I mean, what, what do you think, bro? Uh, I, I can't emphasize too much on what you and Jake just said. You said it all. I watched the match with Jake's. I picked him out. I think within the first 10 minutes, you just some balls that came into the half. Now I've seen defensive error a lot, not just this season, but previous seasons as well. Now, our defending, the ricochets are just too much. The certain balls that came in within the first 10 minutes, my man just kicked them out. He didn't clear yeah. them in the corner, clearing them throwing, mm-hmm. or claim out of the, out the pitch. And I, mm-hmm. I, and I tap Jax and say, yo, brother, you see what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. But Jax already know what we, that my man can do. Now, you already know. We, we said it like a few weeks back or um, a few months back in one of the shows. Mm-hmm. Like, what we pray, like, actually, do you pray for that? That he can fit, that like, stay fit and like keep progressing. Because, like you said, it's one of the best. Like, what I saw that day, I don't know if you lot noticed what happened after the match. Literally, all the players yeah, went up to I my saw. man. I that, was be- saw. that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Like, I like to see, like, I don't, remember I said Oli, I'm not really a fan of Oli, but I said to Jax, I want Oli to stay. I don't know what he done to United, but maybe because he's there, that aura elevates this place, that touch this place. Or make the players become something that we've never seen. But I don't think it's only his coaching ability. It's just maybe that personality that he's got on the team. You gotta give it up to some of his coaching ability. It has it has yeah, some kind but... of effect into the team. Nah, it haven't been cemented for the past two years. So if you can't cement something, 
in the part in the, in, the, in your first two years. I don't think I got compromised with anything you got put on the table. It's been two years. We haven't got solid or cemented something, not even a trophy behind it. But like we said, we we all fans. We can't not be negative. The club is doing brilliant. So all I can say right now, so far, and what I'm saying is this affection to the club and the affection to the players. I don't know what how the players see this guy. Maybe they see him as one of the best uncles in, the, in their life. If that uncle feeling is there, big up to Oli for that. But not his foot, not his managerial um, skills or tactics. Mm-mm. Cool, man. Anyway, like another player that played well was Paul Labile Pogba, man. Instrumental, Rolls Royce. Rise, rise of the field, man. And it was, of course, it was Paul Pogba versus Jack Grealish in that game, of course, both of them equally doing well for their team. Paul Pogba, of course, he got some credit on Match of the Day, of course, from Ian Wright, of course, if he was watching Match of the Day. I'm not too sure about the others because they don't really credit him. Yeah, Super they did credit him. Give him some credit. It's yeah. Okay, I got it. Jags, man, how did you, what did you think of Paul Popper's performance against Aston Villa? There's only one thing to say. He won us the penalty that got us three points. When you have someone of his ability playing in the final third, you're going to win free kicks, you're going to win penalties, you're going to have more opportunities created because that's the type of player he is. He had a very good performance. I'm happy to see him play with a smile on his face. I just want him to continue playing. If this is going to be his last five months with United. Let's see the best of him now, you know? Mm-hmm. Good performance from Pogba, good performance from this team. Anyway, guys, straight up, of course, who was watching my show was instrumental, instrumental, scoring that brilliant hello, a striker, but of course, a striker type of goal. And of course, he's been getting many, many critics recently, of course, because of his lack of goals, he hasn't been scoring, of course, and he has well been in and out of the team. But you never want to consider that, you, you pagans. You know what, man? Sick of the media, you know? I'm just sick of them, bro. They, always, they make me say, oh, scums. But yes, let me not let my feet, my emotions affect me right now with those media scums. But yeah, man. Um, yeah, Anthony Marshall did brilliantly, Amok. Man, what do you think of his performance as well? You know he's my favorite player in the team. So whenever he puts on the performances, I get I personally get excited because that's my number one player in the team. And I wasn't surprised. I'm I know he's capable of doing that and even better than that. I just want to see the better side of him. Because like we all said, this has been really poor, like in terms of scoring goals. But he's him being in the team playing like putting passes together or assisting his teammates, he's been brilliant with it. You can't, we cannot complain. His hold, him holding the boot up in the half, it's been good with it this season. And I can't really complain say too much about it. I just want to go back to what you said and what you asked Jax about the Pogba situation. Mm-hmm. Jax said something I wanted to say. Thumbs up to Jax. Well said. If this is his last five months, they see the best out of him. Like, it gets no better than that. Like, but for some reason, I'm still confident that he won't leave. I don't know why. Well, he's he's got confidence. He expires next season, though. So yeah, no, but it's something that's still confident that he won't leave. <clears throat> they get what I mean, but they just think, like, fingers crossed, they just hope for the best because it's part of this team. That one movement might shake the team. That's what I see. But the team doing good. The team doing very good. And checks, man. Another player that played well, man. Bruno, man. Our guy, bro. Our savior, bro. Mr. Fernandez, bro. Like, what can you say about Bruno Fernandes right now, man? There's nothing to say. Everything he's been doing, he's been doing it since January. He's been doing it for 12 months. He's, our, for me, our best player. He just brings something extra to the team that, like I say, if he goes injured, what's going to happen to our team? That right. piece of extra magic is going to be here, you know? He's a great player. He finds space. The only negative I can find for Bruno, actually, is that one or two times he loses the ball. A lot. But no, no, he loses the ball a lot. Of... A lot. Yeah, yeah. It is. But for a player who's trying to create, especially in a team where, especially if Bruno's playing with Scott and Fred, he's the only one who can create. So he will be making those riskier passes. So one or two of those balls won't be reaching their destination. But apart from that, 
I'm very, I'm very impressed with Bruno, man. He's our, he's our number one star. Number Trust one. Trust me. Hey, better than Kevin the Def- the fraud, bro. That guy. <laughs> hey, you. Fake David Beckham, fam. <laughs> Fake David Stop Beckham. Beckham. <laughs> bending, bending balls like Beckham, bro. Can nah, me? but that nah, is good, though. Hey, the best midfielder, right. the best player in the league, bro. Trust me, man. I've got to say this, man. Bruno Fernandes, best player, bro, in this league so far. PFA player of the year, man. It's been said, PFA though. PFA player It's of been the said. Year. No, he's no. been the best player since he came to the league. Mm-hmm. They know when that done what he's done, bro. Exactly. Shown anything, any type of quality. That, not even, not even Kevin the fraud, man. Jack said something that I'm just going to emphasize on a little bit. He mm. asked the question, what if Bruno gets injured? Exactly. See, when I said that's when we need Papa, because mm-hmm. he's part of the team. Mm-hmm. Van der Beek, it's exceptional. We all know this, but he hasn't get used to this league yet. That's why yep. we're not seeing the like you know what I mean. So like, we cannot put too much pressure on someone who just came into the league. So in my in my point of view, I still believe United should keep full pump up. He's one of the best players in the world. And we are I can't emphasize like we we, we we should be counting ourselves blessed to have him playing for us. That's what I gotta say. Because Jack said something without me picturing Pogba in the team, we would struggle. Without Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba, where is United? I don't know. But we'll, 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 hopefully we don't have to find out, you know. That's one thing I've got to say. Hopefully we don't have to find out. We don't want no injury. Well Let's said. not jinx well anything. Well we said. don't want well to find said. that out. Then. <laughs> well, another well guy said. that's been doing well so far, guys, is our manager, you know, Mr. Oli Gunnar Sochok, you know. And what, um, with Poch going to PSG, you know, what does that mean for Oli? How do you guys feel about Oli right now? As you know, that he's got us in this position. Like, is he doing a good job so far? Do you think that, you know, he might get a new contract or he's just been doing well? What, 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 what do you guys think? I think, given the circumstances in the Premier League, he is doing a very good job at the moment. We're level on points with a game in hand. So, we have to give credit where credit's due. Unfortunately now, do I see him as a man to take us to that next level? I feel like the answer is no. That Leipzig game still burns me. I don't know how we lost that game. I feel like Ed will give him a contract because he'll be a cheap option. We don't really have many other options to look around. Poch, our main guy, has gone to PSG, of course. Um, so I feel like we just have to accept it. Oli's here to stay. Ed backed him in December. So Oli's definitely here till May, in my opinion. Even if we do go on a losing streak, he'll be back till May and then we'll see what's going to happen then. I don't want Oli to stay as manager as much as I love him as a player, but I just got to accept it. So we have to support him till May. But do you believe that he can sustain this title challenge all the way to the end? No, 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 no. Like I said last week, I've seen too many inconsistencies in the last two years, let alone last seven years, to ever think that we're in a genuine title race. Because the way I saw City play the other day, you think City are just going to kick back? <laughs> City are going to be on our hills. City are going to be on our hills. Liverpool are going to be there. Leicester are doing well. United Even fans, Chelsea. Even Chelsea. If they pick up on form again, exactly. Chelsea can beat us up there. So, United fans, don't get too gassed. Top four. But at the same time, I appreciate and understand the, the optimism of people wanting to win the league because it's been so long. But let's talk again in April and see where we are. But for now, I don't think Oli can sustain it. I wish he could, but I don't think so. What about you, Amor? Do you feel like Oli can sustain this title or is uh, be the guy that... Does he have the credentials as well to even sustain this title to race and try and win it? This is a very difficult question for me to ask because based on my emotion, how I feel and what's been happening in the past weeks, I have to, I think Jags is more consistent than Oli. Because you've asked Jags the same question, this is the third show, you're asking him the same question and I believe he's giving you the same answer. <laughs> so like, it's just, like, it's just because we've seen that side of the team too, too many times that 
it's hard for some of us as a fans to get convinced, even when we are doing the best that we could ever do. I don't know if you get what I mean. Like, it's some fans of spending it saying like, oh, we are title contenders. Yes, we are. But don't forget, we are still United that got baiting my likes it, that got kicking like the Champions League. Like, we still the same United that get to semi-finals and get knocked out. So, my optimism is, because of you, what you've been sipping on these past few weeks, I see yeah. juice, fam. Yes, we are. Not today, we, though. <laughs> no, well, like, we are on the, we are tied to contenders. I can tell you this for free. But say, I believe in Oli. No, I don't. I just believe in the players because I've seen I've seen more of individually this season than ever in my team. So I believe in the players that we've got. I don't know if you all remember last season I used to get upset and say we've got good players, we've got quality players. Why are we playing the way we play? But for some reason this season the players shown that they're actually good. They actually got quality. And whatever I, I don't know what Ollie is doing, but whatever he's doing, him keep doing it. Because in terms, in terms of we haven't believed in Oli that he is the man to take United to that next level, like Jack said, no. You cannot compete in Champions League. Like, we've seen managers winning the Premier League and get sacked the same the following season because they did not do well in Champions League. So, Oli got to do better than what people expect of him. But we don't. I don't blame Oli. I blame the club. Oli chose to take the, the, the job. So whatever pressure that comes with it, only you got to back it up. But for so far, so good. Only been doing brilliant this past three months. So big up to him, except the Champions League, though. <laughs> but me, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, yeah. Personally, so far, with Oli, you know, it's, it looks like it's looking good for him. It's been a good season for him so far, you know. Obviously speaking, isn't it? Like, I gotta give him credit so far for what he's done. You know, I'm like, got to give him credit for what he's done so far. Now, I did Even give as him much credit. I want him out. Yeah, now, I did give him credit. For the, best, for the best of the club's future, you know? So far, so far, he's done so, so he's done good. He's done good. Like, but good is not, good is not enough when you're doing your second to, you're doing your second to your third season. You saying good. That's you've been an average, like you know when it comes to like academically. If you're average student, you didn't never got put in in front of anything. They're looking for the A star student. You get what I mean? So why are we looking up to Oli to take us to the next level when we all know he's just good manager? But he's not A star manager like Pep. You lot mentioned. You asked the question. We lost on on um, Pochettino. How old was you when we lost out on was it called the best managers when Ferguson left? Seven years ago, how old was you? How old are we gonna be for us to get the right? Buff, I don't understand. It's stressful, but at the end of the day, like you said, give them credit where it's due. But whatever he's doing for the club right now, it's not good enough. People forgetting the fact that we're just taking the temporary situation and getting glory out of it. We shouldn't get glory out of temporary situation. We should get glory out of what happens in May. You it's get true. what I mean? Like, that's what we should be getting glowing out of. So, based like Jags, as much as I'm real optimistic about the club, but my heart still my goal still with what Jags saying. Like, I go be with Jags with this one. Oli, and obviously, Ed might give, him, might give Oli a new contract. After this season, if he comes, if he comes second, he's going to get a new contract. That's cool, man. Uh, well, obviously, guys, of course, we're moving on straight up to, of course, news break news that's just come out recently, of course. With, of course, Darren Fletcher, of course, you've heard the recruitment of Darren Fletcher, guys. Darren Fletcher has been, well, he was with the under 16s working since October, you know, since October, and he now has been promoted to the first team. I don't know whether they were grooming him or they always was going to put him in the first team. But yeah. We have Darren Fletcher as part of our first team coaching team. I don't know what that means for you guys, whether that's a good thing for Manchester United. You never know, but it can't be any worse than what we have right now. So you can only be adding to what we have right now. So I can only see a good thing come out of this. Of course, with Darren Fletcher's credibility, especially when he was playing at Manchester United, of course, being a 
hard worker himself, you know, a man that can tell people that he literally have to work hard because, of course, he wasn't given the God gift, the talent, you know, of like the top player players. So he literally had to work hard to get to where he needs to get to in for Manchester United. So probably with maybe a player with the right mentality, as I mean, a coach with the right mentality to tell players, you know, you know, how to get things right on the football pitch. Jax, how do you feel about us just bringing in um, Darren Fletcher? I like Darren, do you know what? As a player, mm-hmm. he his leadership skills were, was displayed through his playing in terms that he was a carrier for the team. He never stopped running. He pitched him with the odd goal. He pitched him with the odd assist. I remember Sir Alex Ferguson saying Fletcher was the first name on the team sheet for those big games. Remember when we used to play Arsenal and then big games there? Fletcher always used to start. In terms of being a coach now, for me, it's madness. Man United are, when you look at the table of sponsorships and riches, United are always top two, we're always up there. So why is it now that when it comes to coaches, we can't get the world-class coaches? Fletcher's my guy. I've got a lot, lot of love for that guy. But for me, he should work his way up. Under 16, bang on under 23, in three or four years time, come in once we have better coaches as well within our team so you can learn in a faster and better way. So I'm a bit skeptical about this one. I don't mm. think he's, he's ready to be a manager. Either. I think Oli just, you know what? Just say I was the gaffer of United. Pete, if you're the under 16 manager, I'm going to promote you as well. Give you a little pay rise. You're my boy, innit? We used to play to, with each other. That's probably what Oli has done. But um, it's not a great move. We need better coaches. What do you think, Amok? It's just the Arsenal situation I'm thinking about. The paddy paddy business, the friendly <laughs> business. Like, too you friendly. just said, Jags, you just said it all. Like, I can't really emphasize too much of what you said. Like, when it comes to being a player, like, we all know what Fletcher did for the club. Like, we all know. We always go have that love for Fletcher. You get what I mean? But if he can't not work your way to the top, how are you going to tell your story? Because even when, you go, when you've got your CV, when you miss a year of working or doing something productive, you got explanation to do. What was you doing that year? So are you going to tell me from under 16 straight to the... Yeah, but like, even then, you'll be honest with you, since October, it's six you know? months. six <laughs> months. Like, okay, not even six months. Like, how many? Four months? I didn't even... Four. To be fair, I didn't even know. Who, like, knew? who knew that Darren ups- Fletcher was out at our club? No one knew. I didn't know. Did you know? It's upsetting. It's just upsetting. Like, Jake just said, mm-hmm. it, ooh, I can't emphasize too much. When it comes to sponsorship, like, the club being, like, in, in, the, uh, in the media... Or you talking about the Wall Street Journal or anything got to do with corporate stuff? You know, it's at the top. <laughs> but when it comes to deal with what we got to deal with every day, like every week in week out, the actual thing that made the club become Manchester United, which is football. Where are we on it? Here have we got to guide this place that we've got. Sometimes sentiment don't help. Do you know, it use a lot of sentiment. And I love sentiment. Grew up around me. You seen the way I grew up around people. You seen the things I've done. You know how we are. But has it helped us in anything that we've done in our life? No, not really. So based on personal experience, I'm just saying, we should, as United, we shouldn't go for sentiment. Like this paddy paddy stuff don't help. We are a club that got big billions of, of, of a billion company worth billions sponsoring us. We need to do best. Like that coaching, the coaching department is one big, big situation at United and we need to sort that out. If we ever thinking about developing the club like Ferguson did, we need to go for one of the top managers in the world and actually say, do you know what? Bring in Ivor Ren Giggs or Fletcher, whoever the club thinks is the ex-player and do the same thing they done to Zidane for. Because Zidane actually sat there for years and watched, learned from other managers before he got his turn. Not like Fletcher, he got it. He's getting time to sit in the front seat. Less than six months. He's not sat there for six, seven, eight years. You get what I mean? Watching, learning. I can't emphasize too much. Like we see what people, we see what, if you, you've you been working since you were 18 or 15, 16, what's someone going to tell you about you working? 
you fucked all your life from your teenage life you've been working you've got the experience i don't get it something got put no more situation no more life situations into what we're going through as sentiment won't help this club and jex i can't emphasize too much man i'm really getting emotional because mm -hmm. i love the club too much well yeah man that's, that's true man but i would have preferred an experienced coach but then again if Oli made that decision, then he's bringing his own players, his own coaches into the club. I don't know. But moving on from that, guys, of course, it is the January transfer window has opened. And of course, we've been probably interested in probably buying a defender. All of us Manchester United fans will probably want us to buy a defender. But at the same time, do we really need a new defender? You know, can we go with having everybody there? Then again, we do have the injury the injury to Lindelof, and of course with Axel to Sabe, you never know, he gets injured as well. Even Bayi gets injured, so I'd like to ask you guys a quick question. Do we need to sign a centre-back for January? Do we need it? Especially to go into the, this title race that we have. Yes. If, if we're saying we're in a title race, we mm. need it, definitely. Mm -hmm. Because when Bayi gets injured, and he will, it's going to be peak with just Lindelof and Maguire playing game in, game out. And I don't feel like Maguire is even good enough to be our number one centre back. Yeah, so I maybe feel like too. we do need to sign a centre back and therefore Bastoni from Inter or Apamakano from Leipzig. Those would be my two top picks. So yeah. What about you, Amuk? What do you think that we need a definitely. centre back? If we campaign for the title, we definitely need a centre half back. Because we've considered more goals this season than last few seasons when we started. Now we are in the full fifth or sixth worst defense in the league out of 20. So definitely we need this in the half to compete for the title. Definitely we do. So here when United is thinking about must be someone solid. Like here comes, I want him to be partnered with Bay. My grand needs to go on the bench. And I even remember on, on Super Sport, I think it was um Philip Neville. He said he see Bruno to be Bruno's more for captain material. Of course. And I said 100 percent You don't know that. 100 percent So I don't know what Ali doing in his captain shape, but based on performance and week in, week out, he's looking good, like he said earlier in the show. He barely came in. Maguire be looking good. But Maguire and I think he needs someone to put the pressure on him. You see what he look look sure got. Maguire need the same type of competition. It barely need it. Obviously, Lendelof needs it. But my girl needs better competition because I don't think he's good enough for the club. Yeah. Competition doesn't help. Look how De Gea has performed this season with Henderson breathing down his neck, you know? So competition will be very good for Maguire. Maybe we can even get more out of him if yeah. he signed a world-class yeah. Yep. I totally agree with you. Yeah. It won't make it. It won't stop him from being slow, though. If even if he gets competition, that's the one thing about me. And guess what? Guess what? That's make. the one thing. It would make the manager put him on the bench because if the other center half is performing week in week out, and you the most effective of, of center half, you know performing, you go on the bench. And if you all see Oli don't put Oli refuses to put on the bench and let him play, then we know where the problem is. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's true though it is definitely true man but we do we do definitely do need another defender too actually. definitely 120 percent definitely Compete. i personally think that as well definitely definitely guys of course we have reached of course the weekend premier league game of the week of course I, again like i said I, certain teams lost you know Man like Fraud Lampard, you know, man lost, you know. Hit me, he must be stressed right now, you know. I definitely think that his job should be on the line right now, you know. Out of everyone, who know who would have thought? Oh, England's darling Frank Lampard, you know, out of him, Oli and Arteta, look at him now. Look at him now. You know, with Liverpool losing as well, we had Tottenham winning, we also had Arsenal winning as well. Um, who else? Who else as well? We had a good... Uh, we had, I think Everton won as well. Yeah. Yeah, so some pretty good results as well. Of course, us winning 2-1, putting us on top of the joint joint table. I keep thinking we're on top of the league, sorry. 
We're not. I'm gas, guys. I'm sorry. Maybe, but maybe because we got give me hands in it. Only juice, bro. Only juice. Only juice. It's like only juice makes you think that you're on top of the world, but when you're really not, like, but yeah. You got game of the week, you know. I have to say, you know, my game of the week. Don't know. Blah, scrap. The Gunners. Don't know. Obviously, men's happy. He's happy like Lacazette. Like a black Lacazette. You get me, bruv? I'm still first. I'm still Arteta out, though. Hey, yo. Arteta you, out, you know? You troll. And that's Saka. We got Saka. Saka. We got Saka. Saka. Saka, you star still. Nah, I'm so happy right now as an Arsenal fan right now, you know? <laughs> Even though we're 11th, you know, things are looking quite good. We're still in the second half of the t- table. You may still have to look down upon us, you know. But still, I'm happy that we got the win. You know, 4-0 in the snow, it was peak. Peak, you know. But, Jax, what do you think? What was your game of the week, bro? <laughs> Always trolling an Arsenal. I'm just trolling, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm an Arsenal fan it's on the side. <laughs> You know what? I wanted to watch the Palace United, um, Sheffield United game because I knew Sheffield United were moving mad this season. They're right at the bottom, and I thought Palace would pack them in. It was only 2 0, but Eze's goal, I don't know if you guys saw Eze's goal. I yeah. did say it. He picked the ball up from one his of own. the best, one of the best, the best dribbles he's seen in the league. One of the best That's dribbles this season. The best dribbles this season. Contender mm. of the season. You yes. know, perfection makes perfection looks easy. Is, you know when you're good, some you know you go so good at something, you made it look easy. Mm-hmm. And even the way he finessed the ball, like exceptional. Best goal, goal is best goal, best goal of the weekend. That's yeah. I've got to say that best goal of the weekend. No, but it's we're easy, man. Play together, it's good. So I'm yeah. happy that Pal- that was a good game. Still, good goals. Like two twins play with each other with their dreads in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, understanding where they come from, hard work. You know, is it British? I don't, I don't know, you know. He sound like he oh. sound like he sound like a London youth. He sound like no, I think London he then. plays for England probably. Yeah, is it probably. British, isn't it? Because he yeah. sound like from London. He's the way he spoke he's like definitely from so, ends. He's definitely from. So ends. Like, he got the man then. He got the man then throw on it mm-hmm. when he was after the but goal. I was like, definitely he spoke, from ends. Was like, he looks. He looks like it as well. Check out BT Sport. They got a little documentary on him still, just showing where he grew up and that somewhere in uh, London. But no, was, yeah, I, yeah, well, well, like I didn't even know that. But the way he spoke after the match, they could interview him, and I was like, nah, he looks like one of the man them, you know, like he's mm-hmm. like one of the man them as well. Man, but my game of the week, so my game of the week was as much as obviously I, I shouldn't support them in this instant, but it was just good to see them perform the way they did, based on what the media was saying about them. Man City game for me was the best game this weekend. You see perfection. Remember, I was I was running a commentary on mm-hmm. WhatsApp to you. <laughs> yeah, man. Like perfection, it's too much. Like it was beautiful. See them play the way they played that day. It makes you what Jack said earlier the show. Spot on. Like City is two title contender. Like of course. You see the way they played and it, against Chelsea. He are top spenders. Probably go one of the best young squad. Like, see, do it, see, it did, and see, like you call him, Kevin Freud. <laughs> Kevin the Freud, bro. That's from Where you call him? Mm. My man, my man was playing forward. He was playing at the strike that game. Like, he's taking the pace. He took the pace. Like, it was just, I love seeing team play like that. And I don't want to say this, but I would love to see my team play like that. Even I see my team lose, but we play like that. Big up to the manager on the team. That football is beautiful. That's football as his finest. Finest. Yeah, but Chelsea got it though. They got it. Where were they anyway? Like second half. Who? Chelsea. Chelsea. Man City took the pace. They didn't take the chances. Second half, they would have packed in four more goals. Every time you see the ball was in Chelsea's half. It was total domination. You see what Chelsea Arsenal did against Westbrook? That was nothing. Arsenal had to do that because they've been having poor all, all season. They've had weeks that they've lost games that they shouldn't lose. So them winning, I see it's just building momentum, building momentum. Obviously, you got troll on your team, but I see Arsenal doing good. But Chelsea, you should be worried. I don't know if you've watched Sky Sport. 
um um Greg Neville did say something about um 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 Frank Lampard. He said first it was Oli, mm -hmm. then Ateta, now it's Lampard. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's under, that's life. It's under Premier pressure. League. Premier League, four games can get you sex. Three games can get you sex. And Lampard said he won it. Is it eighteen or seventeen in a row or thirteen in a row? Mm -hmm. Or did he lose games like that? But now, because he's having these bad bumps, everyone talking about him. Just this, is what I said, but, uh, like this league is the best league in the world. You got so many broadcasters to show the Premier League. Like you do not compete. Trust me, if the, if you do not compete like other managers, you are every single four corner in the planet. They are going to be talking about your name. And so for the put then they sit there and talk what they say. Sometimes you might feel a child, whatever, but they're saying the right things because they're not just saying it for us, the audience in the UK. They're too saying it for other audience. You feel the same way. So remember, we of as fans got object, objectives about certain things that we see. Like my object about um, um, Oli is different from yours, Jax. It's different from um, Patrick's. You know what I mean? And so it's like spice, you said, Jax, four. Like four games, four games to change everything. Four <laughs> games to change everything. Yeah, man. But let's move it on straight up to, of course, the game against Man City, the Manchester Derby. You know? Yeah. We're playing Manchester Ooh. City tomorrow. It's quarterfinals of the League Cup, Carabao Cup, if whatever you want to call it. You know? Semi-finals. It's not, is it the set? No, I, oh no, sorry. It is the semi final. The, the repeat yeah, of last no season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's not, no. but apart from that, it's a knockout, guys. Of course, as Jack said, there's no two legs. It's a straight one off game. Of course, paying those pay again, again, a repeat of last season's tie. And, and like I said before, if we can correct our doings from last season, then maybe I can have hope that we might be doing something like winning a trophy or two or Ellis has improved the team a bit something like that but yeah going into tomorrow's game I, of course I'm confident that we can beat City of course yeah but it's going to be a tough game so it has been against City a tough game whether or not we can overcome City and, and beat them tactically tomorrow because of course Pep has found who Oli is you know he found out Oli the last time they played so, so definitely going to be a difficult game. We got, we could, we're we, we could win. We, we could win this match. You know, City are a tough team. You know, and they 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 know how to play us. So, my opinion, we will definitely win. You know, I'm confident. But I, I'm not be surprised, guys, if we lose as well. So don't shoot me. Don't shoot me, guys. What are you saying, Jenks? What about you? It's a cup game, you know. You know these cup games, form kind of goes out the window. Anything can happen, especially in a derby. So I'm very confident. Any cup game, I'm confident, regardless of who we're playing. It can go either way. It's a 50-50 one for me. So I want to relax, crack, crack, open, crack open a bit and watch the game and hope that we win. Um, <laughs> this will be now, what, the fourth semi-final that Oli's been in? Yeah. Third or fourth? Fourth. 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 Bro, Oli, you, you need to get us them. I mm -hmm. said it earlier the show, though. Like, we cannot keep going to the semi-finals and exactly. getting nothing out of it. We yeah. need to get something. Like, definitely get something. Because if you don't get there, we do understand. But you get in there, which means you got the quality to get there. I believe we will win this game tomorrow. But the only, object, the only objection I've got, both teams are actually playing fantastic. They've both mm -hmm. been in good forms. Mm -hmm. And I just got to go with Jack said it's a cup game. Like anything could happen. And Pep ain't really like them cup managers. It's like for Pep is like someone that prepared himself for like back and forth or for the longevity in that. So with just that little edge, I see Oli winning tomorrow. But just seeing what the two teams done this past weeks, it's gonna be a tight one. It's gonna be a tight one. Definitely, you think it's gonna be a tight one, man? No, I think it's gonna be a tight one. We we, we all gonna we all gonna get it a little edge because yeah. it's a cup game, but it's gonna be a tight one. Definitely tight one. Definitely, that's that says it all in it, guys. Because <laughs> we all think that was gonna be a tight match, and of course we believe we can win. Of course, you know, let's not doubt that. 
But then again, we're playing City, our ops, our noisy neighbours, you know, a team that has spanked us a lot of times, isn't it? It's just Oli that gave Oli's gave Oli's giving it to them. Oli gave us Oli gave us Oli gave us a smile. Oh, so who knows? Big up Oli for that. Oli's the one that's been a bit consistent against City. Van Gaal yeah. just had it once, isn't it? Was just mm-hmm. one time he won against City. Yeah, once, isn't it? That phone is it four one or four? Is it four two or something like that? Four two, yeah, four two. Three two, yeah. Yeah, man. But yeah. apart from that, but we've been mm. getting it. Like you know, you always say you want to skip this picture. <laughs> you always say you want to skip that picture. Yeah, always do. Like, I just want to yeah. press the next. Back in the days, the next. The next. Because we used to get. If this is a music track, next. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. But, guys, this, let's just end it there, of course. You know, definitely. You, Jake definitely thinks that we'll, we we could have a chance. We we could win. And Mook thinks that we've got a chance we can win. We we'll definitely think it's going to be a tough, sticky game, you know. Definitely going to be a sticky, toughy game. But apart from that, guys, of course, we'd just like to thank you for watching. As always, you know, as always, I was always remember to subscribe, you know. But we have to ask the guys, especially where can we find them on the socials? So, I'm where can we find you on the social? And you can find me on Instagram, pretty flack underscore 16. And before I say anything, I just want to say thank you guys for everything you lot done for us, man. Big up to you. And above it all, Happy New Year's, man. Like, what? this is 2021. Happy New Year's, Wish you guys. guys, like, every, all the best in life, man. Like, like more views, more followers. But, guys, all the fans out there, keep your head up, man. Be optimistic. This is the beautiful year. Last year was crazy, but it's going to be a better one for us. Let's be optimistic. And, Jax, where can they find you on the socials, bro? Lovely message, Amok. I like that. I know. Uh, you I have know. to, man. You have to, bro. Um, Instagram. Jags underscore United, as always. You know, of course, guys, if you can find me on Instagram, my personal Instagram account, which is Avril underscore Spice. And of course, do remember to follow the official account of Red United, which is Red United TV One, baby. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter as well, Avril underscore Spice, same as Snapchat. And I have always remember to subscribe, smash that like button, remember to share. You know, remember to share to all those people that you like, you don't like, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, of course, it's been. Yeah, a you forgot, you forgot, you forgot, you forgot the exes, though. You change, the exes. You change the exes, no, 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 exes week, fam. Isn't it? You know, <laughs> man, they need breaks. The exes. the exes need breaks sometimes, you know. They can't get angry every week, you know. <laughs> you know, that other ones, they got, not every week, man. You gotta hit I hate him. That, I hate you gotta that, surprise I hate him that, sometimes, you know, catch him off guard, you know, with that. Link, Shit. you know, when you go, you send it to him off guard, and you want to be like, What's this again? But yeah, man, that's like thank you guys for watching, of course. And as always, mention that, fan, remember to keep it united and remember to keep it red united. United, well, guys, peace out.